Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and a few weeks ago, I made a post on my community tab asking you all to comment the team you plan to use for your playthrough of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and that I might rate those teams in a video. Well, this is that video. I'll be browsing through your comments, of which there are over 5,500 of them, so I won't be browsing through all of them, and rating the teams that you plan to use based on an extremely strict criteria of whatever I want. Patty the Legend 16, can't wait to see the amount of people using Infernape, Seraptor, Luxray, Roserade, Floatzel, and Garchomp. Well, that would be a very good team, so I, I see why that would be popular. Ooh, Sonic the Mango. I want to use Team Sky, which means I'll use Empoleon, Staraptor, Crobat, Driftblim, Gliscor, and Togekiss. Sonic the Mango, you were so close to being so great, but you have Empoleon. Empoleon cannot fly. <laughs> because of that, I have to give your team a six out of 10. It would have been a 10 out of 10 if it was a proper Team Sky team. Because the only Pokemon that can be in a Team Sky team that can't fly is a Mighty Enna. Flint Feather, I'm gonna try to use different mons that I have in past playthroughs. Empoleon, Frostlass, Leafeon, Houndoom, Yanmega, Slash Gliscor, and Toxicroak. Check this out. I can take your teams and I can put them into Maryland's team type matchup calculator to kind of like get a better idea of what types your team would struggle with. And obviously you can do this too. But one thing I noticed is that if we go with this person's team that has Yan Mega, you got a lot of problems with fire, ground, flying, and rock. However, if we change it to Gliscor, things get way better. Did you see that? The total weaknesses go down. There's only one type that half your team is weak to. But you have a Pokemon that is totally immune to it, and you have a type that resists it. So I think Gliscor's the better Pokemon, not just because I like Gliscor a lot. I also like Yanmega, but Gliscor is gonna make your team have a lot fewer problems. I would say if you went with Yanmega, I'm gonna have to give it like a four. But if you go with Gliscor, this is like an eight. You may be wondering how you can reach 10 out of 10. It has to just be a lot of Pokemon that I like and that are good. <laughs> I haven't played a Sinnoh game yet. Oh, Torterra, Staraptor, Luxray, Lucario, or Machamp, I like both. Gastrodon, Blue Shellos, Best Shellos, agreed. Toxicroak. Two fighting types, but I don't care. So I brought the team in here. I went ahead and used Lucario just because I personally think you should go with Lucario over Machamp because Machamp is just pure fighting, which then is completely redundant with Toxicroak. Whereas if you use Lucario, yes, it's another fighting type, but then you have steel offense and defense, um, which does not overlap with Toxicroak as much. The big problem here is that you've got three Pokemon weak to ground. However, I think this team does a good job of dealing with that because literally all three other Pokemon counter ground. I think the main things that concern me about this team are not so much the defense, but the offense. It looks like there's no offensive stab coverage for ghost, psychic, or dragon. Dragon you can probably get around because there's not that many dragon types, but there's a ghost gym leader and a Psychic Elite Four, and you would just have to be dealing with those with coverage moves with no defensive way to handle it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this team a seven out of 10. It's better defensively than I thought it was going to be at first glance, but on offensive, it needs a bit more. Ha ha, it is I, Grunty Boy. What are you? Oh man, dude, why do you smell so bad? I am trying to smell so bad that you pass out from the toxic fume, so I am free to steal all of your belongings. Relax, I'm kidding. I just stopped using deodorant because I found out the kind I was using had aluminum and parabens in it. No, thank you. So I'm here to ask for recommendations for a new kind. Wow, what a coincidence. This video is actually sponsored by Native Deodorant. Wow, that is a coincidence. Native Deodorant is aluminum and paraben free in addition to being vegan and cruelty free. And they have a plastic free packaging option as well. The deodorant is not sticky and dries quickly and it stays all day, even after exercise or a full day of moving around. Well, that's lovely, but how does it smell? Oh, I love the scents. I got matcha and sweet cream, lavender and rose, and oat milk latte. I think they all smell amazing, but oat milk latte is my favorite. Ooh, can I try the lavender and rose one? I wanna smell like flowers. Wait, when did you take your shirt off? Oh, whatever, yeah, sure. Thank you. Put a little here. Put a little here. Oh, 
incredible! This smells amazing! How do I get more? Three deodorants are normally $36, but if you use the link in the description below and my code MNJTV, you can get them for $24, which is 33% off. They also offer toothpaste and body wash as well, and my code can get you 20% off of those too. Perfect! I'm off to get some more in addition to this lavender one that I will be keeping. Ta-ta! Wait, Grunty Boy, you're still not wearing... Ugh, never mind. Thanks so much to Native Deodorant for sponsoring this video, but now let's get back to it. Flex Tape, <laughs> Torterra, Drift Blim, Weavile, Bassidon, Gallade, and Floatzel. Okay, I'm intrigued by this. Wanted to branch away from using all the basic mons like Luxray and Staraptor. This team can handle each other's weaknesses very well. Okay, so immediately I like this team. The fact that there is no, like, type that has super effective damage for half the team or more is like, it's not easy to achieve that, so that's great. I've been underwhelmed by using a Drift Blend myself in the past, but that was also in Gen 4, and Pokemon just across the board tend to be better in newer generations because they get better moves. Weavile I know is gonna be great. Weavile is a fantastic Pokemon. You've got the dark type to deal with the psychic types and the ghost types, um, and it's like a really great Pokemon to deal with Cynthia's Garchomp because it's faster than Garchomp and has the four times weakness stab. I think some downsides to this team is that we don't know how easy it's gonna be to get the necessary item to evolve Weavile. I assume it's going to be more closer to the platinum point in time. I believe it was later in Diamond and Pearl, um, but you won't be able to get Weavile itself until like, I think around seven gym badges is how it was in Platinum. Hopefully it's easier in the new game, but just something to keep in mind. And hopefully Dawn Stones for Gallade are not too hard to get. One potential issue you might run into is that your only Pokemon to deal with water types is Torterra, which is, I love Torterra, it's a great Pokemon, but a big downside to using it as your main water type dealing with Pokemon is that it doesn't resist water due to its secondary ground typing, and it's four times weak to ice, and most water Pokemon get ice coverage, like Gyarados with Ice Fang or Floatzel, I think also gets Ice Fang, might get Ice Beam as well. Um, so that can cause some issues for you because a lot of the water Pokemon are faster than Torterra. So not having a backup Pokemon to deal with water types, that could give you some issues. I could be mistaken, but I believe that offensively, all these Pokemon have a stab super effective type for all the other types, which is great. I'm gonna give this team a nine out of 10. I think defensively, it's very strong. Offensively, it's quite solid. I think what's holding me back from giving it 10 out of 10 is Torterra and Drift Blim. Torterra being the only one to deal with water types, as I mentioned, it has some flaws with that. And Drift Blim, I'm personally not a huge fan of Drift Blim, mainly just because of the ghost type. I think a different flying type Pokemon could be more effective, at least on the offensive side of things, because Dark and Ghost do the same thing offensively. Just Dark does it better because it doesn't die to ghosts. I honestly think if you swapped out Drift Blim for Togekiss, this would be an incredible team. Paradoxical, Bidoof, Tank, Bidoof, Main Attacker, Bidoof, Nose Dragon Ascent for type coverage, Bidoof, Setup, Bidoof, Swap Fodder, Bebarrel, My Ace. <laughs> Guys, we have our first 10 out of 10 team. Dubdog5, Infernape, a great fire type, just all around a great starter. That is true. I personally believe it to be the best of the Sinnoh starters in regards to like usefulness. I have a fondness for Torterra, but like Infernape is just so much better. Togekiss, fairy typing, plus it's a nice switch for using Staraptor as the flyer. Togekiss, now that it's fairy type, is like, if you get the Togepi egg in the same place you do in Platinum in Eterna City, like, if you just want the strongest team, just flat out, it should include a Togekiss. Lucario, double up on fighting, I know. But he's still a badass Pokemon, has the potential to Mega Evolve. Ooh, I wouldn't get your hopes up for Mega Evolution. Garchomp, pseudo legendary and powerhouse. Garchomp is obviously Devastation Nation. Snorlax, Chunk Hit Boy. Also great for coverage. Spiritomb, only one weakness being fairy and could be that hidden gem that everyone looks over. Well, Spiritomb, what a unique decision. Maybe I would consider that, because like, I feel like Spare Tomb's gonna be easier to get in this new version of Sinnoh than in the old versions. Once again, another team where no type is good against at least half of it. Impressive. Lots of immunities. Spare Tomb certainly adding to that. How are things on the offensive side? It just occurred to me there's no water type, which is uh, unusual. In the original Gen 4 games, you kind of had to have a water type. But I suppose if you've got Garchomp to deal with rock types, but I suppose 
Rock is very well covered by Infernape, Lucario, and Garchomp. Fire is only covered by Garchomp, but Garchomp has the dragon type too. Garchomp's not gonna have any problem dealing with fire types. Ground though, there's no super effective stab against ground. Togekiss is very defensively good against ground, but there's a whole elite four member that's a ground type. There's also no way to deal with water types. There's no electric type, no grass type. No super effective stab for flying either. So defensively, I like this team a lot, but offensively, water, ground, and flying have no super effective stab at all. Now, of course you can get coverage for it, but the fact that there's three whole types, two of which have specialists. There's the water gym leader and the ground elite four member. That concerns me. So I feel like I gotta give this team just a four out of 10 because the really hard hitters, the strong Pokemon like Infernape, Togekiss, Lucario, Garchomp, basically they're all strong Pokemon. So I'm not gonna give it a like a low grading. You know, I'll give it a five. I'll move it up to five just because the Pokemon themselves are very strong but I feel like you should consider swapping out Snorlax for a Pokemon that can deal with the types that you do not currently cover for. You could do an ice Pokemon that learns freeze dry. I'm trying something different with this team. All Pokemon that have interested me throughout the years that I have never used in a real game in-game team before. Torterra, Honchkrow, Frostlass, Bronzong, Toxicroak, Rotom Wash. If BDSP gives us Rotom pretty early and allows us to change its forms like in Platinum. Ooh, yeah, that's a an interesting uncertainty. If it does allow you to get it pretty early, that's gonna be a pretty useful Pokemon for a lot of people. Okay, so immediately I notice that half the team is weak to fire and half the team is weak to ground, but that's actually deceptive. Because if Bronzong has Levitate, then ground goes down to two. And if it has Heat Proof, then fire goes down to two. You should definitely go with Levitate though, because like Levitate creates an immunity, whereas Heat Proof creates just a neutral damage. Oh wait, I noticed another issue. If you can use Rotom, that has Levitate as well. So half your team would be immune to ground, which is pretty good. Half the team is weak to fire, which isn't great. Rotom Wash is mostly good at countering that. Unfortunately, if you get hit with the Solar Beam, you're gonna not be having a great time. I also noticed there's no ground type. Okay, so I'm gonna give this team a seven out of 10. Um, the three fire weaknesses and only one other Pokemon to deal with fire isn't great. If there were three fire weaknesses, and there were two Pokemon that could counter fire types, then I'd feel a lot better. Torterra, I love it so much, but it's it's just so weird. Like the type combo is so strange that a lot of types that it would normally be good against, like water due to its grass type or fire due to its ground type, it's not as good against because the other type makes it kind of worse for it. But offensively, it's quite good. I didn't think there was a single type that you didn't have super effective stab against. So I like that. I'm a little concerned about this trouble you would have with Cynthia's Garchomp just because Frostlass is pretty slow, right? Oh my God, no, no, it's not slow. Why did I think it was slow? 110? Frostlass is faster than Rapidash? And Infernape? It's the same speed as Latios and Latios? That's amazing. It's faster than Garchomp. Okay, I forget what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, oh, it might get outsped and outcode by the Garchomp, but no, you'll just outspeed it and kill it. That's incredible. Respect, Frostlass. My gosh, I might have to pick one of you up. Seven out of 10, that's what I'm going with. Infernape, Luna Christ. <laughs> He rest. Wait, no, Ludacris is dead. Ludacris, different playthrough. He's, he's okay. Staraptor, hopefully Brave Bird plus Reckless. Gastrodon, classic bulky water. Love to stall with this thing. It's a wonderful Pokemon. Weavile, great. Magnezone, ah, first mention of this Pokemon. Miss Magius, I've never been able to use one on a playthrough team. Also, Mr. Viss is really cute. I'll say right now, Miss Magius is the weak point. If you've already got a dark type, there's really not that much need for a ghost type. I, I always think that that's my first instinct just because they're the same offensively, very different defensively. So there can be a place for Miss Magius. I'm just concerned that it's a pure ghost type when you already have a dark type and that it's just not gonna end up used very much. All right, once again, there are no types that are super effective against at least three of these Pokemon. That's great. My immediate thinking is that a grass type could be helpful to have more than one Pokemon to deal with the water types, but I'm also not super concerned since Magnezone 
It's really good. <laughs> Although there are quite a few water ground types in the Sinnoh decks. Gastrodon and Quagsire being two that immediately come to mind. There might be a third. Is Whiskash in the Sinnoh decks? I don't think so. Oh, it is. Okay, so you might want a grass type because Magnezone will just, will just die. <laughs> so you're gonna need something to deal with the water ground types. Although I think Miss Mages can learn Energy Ball, but I'm not sure at what point you get that TM. So offensively, normal you've got. Yeah, offensively, all of them are covered by at least one, but I just feel like you'd have a lot more safety if you swapped out Miss Magius. I feel bad to like always dissing these ghost types, but it's just like, I just, dark, I just like a lot more. I'm gonna give this team, I think I'm also gonna give it a seven out of 10. There's a lot I like about it. I think it's a solid team, but I feel like if you swapped out Miss Magius for maybe a fairy type like Gardevoir, or a grass type like Rose Raid, it would become like, well, no, Rose Raid would increase the fire weakness to three. So maybe a Gardevoir. Gen four is by far my favorite gen. Ah, exciting. So it has some of my favorite months of all. My fully evolved team will be, read the names as if you were saying, Team Sky. There's entirely too many syllables for that. I'll try. Knight the Empoleon, Bangela the Luxray. Oh, you got all the nicknames. Galadriel the Glade, Lucara the Lucario, Babalu the Glaceon, and Kronos the Dialga. Ooh, a legendary. Well, uh, good sir, your nicknames are cool, but your team composition is not the best. Two steel types, two fighting types, four Pokemon weak to ground with no immunities to ground, four Pokemon weak to fighting with no immunities to fighting. Mm, I'm sorry, man. I like your nicknames, but in a strict like team composition sense. Oh wait, no, it's three steel types. I forgot about Empoleon. You've got three steel types. You do have a Dialga, which is gonna just deal with a lot of stuff by itself. But I feel like I gotta give this like a two because Cynthia's Garchomp is going to give you so many problems. So many problems. Because yeah, you have your ice type Glaceon, but unlike Frostlass and Weavile, it's not faster than Garchomp. So Raphael, my good sir, in regards to nicknames, 10 out of 10. They're very cool. Team composition, my God, you have three steel types and it's not a monotype run. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> I've thought about this lots and settled on Rose Raid, Toge Kiss. Hoping Cynthia still gives you the egg like in Platinum. If she doesn't, we riot! Miss Magius, Frostlass, Gardevoir, and Milo Tick. No, this isn't tight balance, they're just my favorites. Ooh, time for me to be mean. Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought. You said not typed balance, and I was expecting like a whole bunch of weakness overlaps, but there's only two, Ghost and Steel, which are Actually, quite significant problems, especially steel. You have no types to counter steel. No ground, no fighting, no fire. Oh, I just realized you're not using a starter, huh? So I went through the types and there are five types that you have no super effective stab for. Those are normal, electric, which it's hard with electric because your only option is ground. Ice, steel, as I mentioned. Okay, I actually think it was only four. I think I miscounted. But regardless, that's a lot. And steel types just, oh, steel types just destroy you. I think I got to give this a three. I'm sorry. They're lovely Pokemon. And I think it'll be a fun challenge. But like in regards to team balance, the steel type problem is a bad one. There's just so many types you've got no super effective stab for. Like four is a lot. It's like the most I think I've discussed in this video so far. All right, those are all the teams I'm gonna be rating today. I apologize if I didn't get to yours, but one important thing to note is that even if your team is not balanced, what matters the most is that you have fun. As for what my team will be, I don't, I don't know. I wanna use Gliscor, but like, I haven't figured out the other ones. So you're just gonna have to watch my playthrough to find out. That'll be on M&J TV Plays. Make sure you've subscribed to my other channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big events. Gotta catch them all.